A dry suit isn't just a fancy dive garment and a straight up chick magnet. It's a vessel that defies the harsh realities of cold water diving. Your armor against the frigid embrace of the abyss. I'm planning on doing a whole lot more cave diving in Florida in the near future. And I started going through my gear and seeing what needed updating because it had been a minute since I've been cave diving. And I decided that it was time for a new dry suit. It can take a while for a custom dry suit to get made. And around here in Hawaii, no one does the measuring for it. So I'd either have to do it myself, which I've never done before, or trust my custom suit to one of these fancy new apps that are supposed to figure out the measurements for you. Now, I don't think it's ever a bad thing to go with a custom suit. I think it's a great idea. But with my trip to Florida, and it just around the corner, I didn't really have time to wait for a custom suit. With the supply chain the way it is right now in the dive industry, it can be difficult to get certain items in a timely manner and dry suits can definitely be one of those things with some manufacturers. It wasn't a problem for Hollis though, and luckily I happen to love their dry suit. On paper at least. Now that I've started to put it through its paces, let's see how I like it in water. If I had to sum up this dry suit in one sentence, I guess I'd have to say that it's a robust, tried and true design with some nice modern appointments. It's a front zip trilam suit with a telescopic torso, meaning the height is adjustable to some extent. This is how the majority of suits are designed these days, although there are companies doing other things like back zip, front zip on the top, and neoprene dry suits. The sky's the limit. There's all kinds of different types of dry suits. But for this review, obviously, we're focusing on the Hollis suit, which is a diagonal front zip tri-lamp suit. For me, I like the idea of a self-donning front zip suit so that I don't have to have someone do my zipper up for me before I go diving. Other divers and instructors have different preferences. This is just mine. I'm six foot five, so height is always a concern for me when it comes to exposure protection. My torso is fairly long, so the telescopic design was pretty high on my list of priorities for a dry suit. Another key feature I wanted was the ability to change out seals in the field. My last suit didn't have field replaceable seals, and I didn't think it was gonna be as big of an issue as it was until it was. There's nothing quite like ripping a seal right before a dive and not being able <laughs> to fix it in time. The DX300X comes with SciTech neck and wrist seal systems, which is nice. I've used them before in my original dry suit, not this last one, but the one before that. And I really liked them. Uh, the neck seal ring has changed. It's more flexible now, and it's, it's very comfortable. It's, in my opinion, a lot better than the original. The silicone seals are not cheap by any means, but they are extremely comfortable and inexpensive enough to warrant carrying a set around in your save -a dive kit. The zipper is a modern YKK low profile zipper. By the way, if you're ever buying something with a zipper on it and it isn't a YKK zipper, then just leave it. You don't need that kind of anger and frustration in your life. It's my first time using one of these plastic zippers. Typically I've had the brass zippers in the past and supposedly you don't have to baby these as much as you do on a brass zipper. I'm still babying it. It came with a tube of wax, so obviously they want you to wax it, but hopefully it's gonna last me a really long time without any problems. I'm hearing great things about the longevity of these zippers. The thigh pockets are great. They Velcro down almost completely flat. So if you're diving side mount and you don't want anything in your pockets to bump into your tanks, 
then you cannot put anything in there or maybe just slide in a set of wet notes and you're good to go. But you've still got the pockets if you want to use them later for back mount doubles or single tank diving and you want to stuff stuff in your pockets, they're nice to have. But since I dive side mount primarily, they're usually just velcroed down and maybe have like a set of wet notes in them or something like that, maybe slates. The pockets also have a nice full-size D-ring inside, which is great. I hate it when they include one of those little one-inch D-rings. Those things are almost impossible to hit with a bolt snap when you're wearing gloves. Uh, you really need a full-size D-ring in that pocket, in my opinion. I also really like that the foot pockets are neoprene socks. I don't necessarily like dry suits with the boots permanently attached. Some people love that. That's fine. I don't like it because I walk on rock a lot in my in my suits and I don't want those dry suit boots getting chewed up and then having to get them changed out by a professional dry suit repair shop when I could just be buying a new pair of dive boots to throw on over my neoprene socks. The other nice thing about them is that they're a snug fit, so especially once you've got the boots on there, you don't really get a whole lot of air migrating into your feet, which can be a problem with other dry suits. So far, I haven't really felt the need to wear gaiters with this dry suit, which is great. It's just one less thing to have to deal with, and that's awesome because there's a lot of stuff to deal with. One last touch that I really liked was the reflective tape on the arms. I think that's a great idea. Take it from somebody that's actually been stuck on the surface, basically lost at sea. You will take any type of signaling device you can possibly get your hands on in that moment. Because being out there alone, unsure of what's going to happen to you, is absolutely terrifying. But that's a story for another day. I've never actually uh, been able to bring myself to talk about that event on camera. Maybe one day. But I will say, do not skimp on your surface signaling equipment, especially when you're boat diving. And if you think there's any chance that you could get separated from the boat on any of your diving, you should be carrying some sort of GPS beacon like the Nautilus Lifeline or the Garmin. But I digress. The DX300X is one of the most robust feeling suits that I've ever had my hands on. The material is extremely stout and the seams are beefy. I have like zero concerns about the longevity of this suit as long as you're not walking around on concrete with the neoprene socks for an extended period of time. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I've gone over this suit in great detail and I couldn't find any kind of manufacturing defects, tool marks or anything else out of the ordinary. The people making the dry suits at Hollis are clearly paying attention to detail. Off the rack suits do have the potential to be a bit of a gamble. I remember the old guys at the first dive shop that I worked at talking about dry suit sizes and how originally there were only three dry suit sizes. Too small, too big, and doesn't fit. <laughs> Not very appealing. This suit comes in nine different sizes, ranging anywhere from five foot three to six foot six and 120 pounds, all the way up to 295 pounds. According to the size chart, I wear a 3XL, and that was dead on. However, I do think that you should find a good dive shop to purchase your suit from. One that will take care of you if they special order you the suit and it ends up not fitting. If you start hearing anything about no returns on special orders, then steer clear of that dive shop. And maybe one day dive shops like that will get the message and change their evil ways. Like I said before, bit tolerance in the height department on the dry suit is aided by the telescopic design. It's a little more forgiving, which is great for an off the rack suit. There's also stretch panels and a bit of elastic in the back of a suit, which kind of tightens up the midsection and prevents air migration into the legs, which is really awesome. I'm seeing that on more and more dry suits these days and for good reason. I'm really glad that the elastic in the back was included on this dry suit. Time will tell on the durability of the DX300X, but so far so good. And it appears to be an extremely hard wearing suit. If I find anything to the contrary in the future, I'll update the pinned comment 
below and let you know. Otherwise, you can use the link in the pinned comment below to become part of the real MVPs of the dive industry, Dive Vibe supporters on Patreon. Thank you to everyone that is already supporting our work. You keep Dive Vibe going. Overall, I'm really happy with the DX300X, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I look forward to it being a reoccurring feature on the channel and my partner in crime for many, many dives to come. Thanks for watching. May your dives be deep and your deco efficient. Dive safe and I'll see you in the water.